Collecting Rust in the Nursery. In order to determine races of stem rust, the first thing you need to do is collect rust from plants. There's two different ways to do this. One is to collect the dry spores directly, and the second way is to collect rust in a solution like oil or water. Now in this room, we have these plastic cubicles. And these cl plastic cubicles are used as isolation chambers for increasing rust. And so in this particular cubicle is a pot that has some plants growing that have been inoculated with an isolate of rust that we'd like to collect for inoculation. One of the ways that we um, collect dry spores at the Serial Disease Laboratory is to use a gelatin capsule. Now gelatin capsules are made for medicine for humans and so they're made so that you could swallow them and they would dissolve. What this means is that you have to be careful to not get these wet. If they are kept in a humid place or if they are um, exposed to water, they will dissolve or lose their integrity. The simplest way to collect rust with a capsule is simply to take the capsule and scrape the spores into the ca capsule from the leaf. So you can see that this simple method of collecting spores into a capsule is effective. Now one thing to note is that if I was going to collect several different isolates of stem rust, it would be important to take this capsule and put it away into an envelope and then wash my hands before I went to the next isolate. If you would like to collect several different isolates of stem rust or you have lots of spores that you would like to collect, what you can do is use a vacuum pump in order to collect spores more rapidly. And so what I'm showing here is this vacuum pump which is attached to this tube. And what this will do is suck air into the tube. And when you attach a metal device called a collector to the end of the tube and attach the capsule to the collector, this apparatus will allow you to collect spores through the collector and into the capsule relatively fast. So air will be drawn through the top of the apparatus and into the tube. If you place your finger over the top, then air will be drawn through the nozzle. If you place this next to a plant that is infected with rust, then the spores and air will come through the nozzle, the air will go up and into the tube, but the spores, which are relatively heavy, will drop down into the capsule. So now I am going to demonstrate this. So you can see that this method of collecting dry spores into capsules with a vacuum pump and collector is relatively easy and efficient. Another way to collect dry spores off of plants is to shake plants that have been infected with stem rust over whey paper. And I'm going to demonstrate that. I've demonstrated three different ways to collect dry spores. Collecting directly into gelatin capsules, and then collecting into capsules using a vacuum pump, and third, shaking plants over whey paper. Instead of collecting dry spores, you can collect spores into a liquid like oil or water in tween. And the advantage of collecting spores into a liquid is that you can immediately take those spores and inoculate them onto a plant. The disadvantage is that you cannot store these spores for a very long period of time in oil or water. First, I'm going to demonstrate collecting spores into oil. So here is a wheat stem that has been infected with stem rust 
This is simply a vial full of sultrol oil. If you take the stem and swirl it around inside of the oil, you can see that the spores will begin to mix in the oil. And you can get a solution of spores that you can then inoculate onto a plant directly. You can keep adding stems and mixing them in order to get a higher concentration of spores in the oil. Now when you collect spores into water, it is very hard for the spores to mix with the water. And so what we sometimes do is add tween 20 to the water. And this will allow spores to mix more readily. Once you've added tween 20 to water, you can take a stem that has been infected with rust and mix it into the solution. Even after adding tween 20, it requires vigorous shaking in order to get the spores to mix with the water. Now the overall point is to get a solution of spores that you can inoculate onto plants. And so the specific concentration really doesn't matter. What matters is getting the spores and then inoculating them onto plants.